when he started his journey in health and well-being, his world turned upside down. He became a model and having worked with incredible brands, including working closely with Dave Beckham for Hey Club Whisk, he became a content creator that inspires people through his amazing travels and he used his reach as a true advocate for nature and the environment. I was at rock bottom mentally and physically. That was probably one of life's biggest blessings for me because I only had kind of one way to go with that. Fast forward a couple more shoots. I then got scouted by a modeling agency in Germany and in London. That is something that is just beyond the way you look. Because I don't want to look like I've always been this person because that yeah, alienates yeah. people. Being true to who you are and what you want yeah. to be as a content creator. everyone, I'm Mara Genovese, founder and president of MG Power, a fully integrated marketing powerhouse. And again, welcome to the Influencer Marketing Uncovered podcast. Today we are here in our podcast studio with, let me see if I'm going to get right his name. Help me guys, Grillen Pugh. Very good. Right? Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> He's a content creator and an influential voice on so many fronts, from fashion to nature. When he started his journey in health and well-being, his world turned upside down. I'm very curious about this upside down. In the most positive way. He became a model and having worked with incredible brands, including working closely with Dave Beckham for Hey Club Whisk. He became a content creator that inspires people through his amazing travels and he used his reach as a true advocate for nature and the environment, being a WFFF UK ambassador. And to host <laughs> this episode with me, I'm so happy to have the only, the one and only <laughs> Holly Bishnow. Did I get your surname Bachino, right? Yeah. Bachino. Oh, guys, today okay. is, a, is a big day for me <laughs> with surname. So Holly is our wonderful MG Power account coordinator, and she's been with us for about two years now. And today is the first time she's with me co-hosting this amazing podcast. Welcome, Holly. Thank you, Myra. Thank you for having me as your co-host today. I'm so excited. Today, we're going to be talking about what storytelling through content creation really means and discuss life transformation, travel, nature, and of course, our favorite social media. And so welcome, Gwilym. Thank you. Thank you for having yeah. me. <laughs> so excited to have you. Yes. And uh, I think you're a third or second guest on this new studio. Third. Third. So, but in person is the second, right? So very excited to have you very here. Honored. Thank you so much for making the time. So mm -hmm. I think like before we start talking about social media, storytelling, content creator, mm -hmm. I wanted to know your story because, you know, I don't know you, Holly, but I, I'm so mm -hmm. I was so impressed when I started reading about you and how you started and all the transformation you have done. Uh, and looks like your transformation was just not for the outside. It was like inside out. Mm -hmm. And that transformed your life completely in so many ways. But I don't want to try to guess. I just wanted you to tell your inspiring journey before we actually go into more storytelling. Yeah, that's a, it's a long story. So I'll try and compress <laughs> it and be as succinct as possible. And I'd say that it's a transformation that is ongoing. You know, you're never, you're never there. It's about the journey, not the destination, as people say. 100%. Um, my background originally was in consumer finance. So straight from school, I didn't go to university. I went straight to work in business and I'm really compressing this. Uh, within 12 months, I'd set up my own mortgage and loan brokerage. Um, we are the fourth fastest growing company in Wales. Wow. And then six months later, the global credit crisis hits. Lehman Brothers, who... That was in 2009. Uh, 2008, but it was Eight, actually yeah. in 2007 when Lehman Brothers went out of business okay. and they were 60% of our income. So you can wow. imagine 60% of your revenue getting slashed mm -hmm. I, yeah. in one phone call. Um, so that was fun. Gosh, <laughs> <nice>. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that was good fun. So I hung on tooth and nail for a while, being young and without much other experience. I, I did the best I could and then pivoted into life insurance, which 
is the uh, sector with my current company, I'm Insured. It's okay. currently still running, which I set up in 2010. Um, so that's always been my background and my grounding has been in business, uh, financial okay. services and the numbers side of things. So it's given me quite a, a unique perspective coming into the influencer mm -hmm. and, and creative world. Mm -hmm. um, but I never intended on being an influencer. I think even when I started, there wasn't such a, a category or even an industry. Um, I was at rock bottom mentally and physically. I was kind of massively overweight, uh, played with injuries. And yeah, it was at rock bottom. And that was probably one of life's biggest blessings for me because I only had kind of one way to go with it. And I didn't have any plans. I didn't have any uh, massive goals mm -hmm. or anything, but it was just a case of, right, no more. Yeah. Something needs to give, something needs to change. I need to do something differently. Mm -hmm. So that started a, a journey of gradually improving my health, um, losing some weight, uh, trying did many, many different diets. It's not a case of I did this, this one and this one, one worked. This one. Um, but it was all about kind of improving my quality of life. Uh, partway through that, I started a band with a, a friend of mine. And, you know, coming from where I was, even though I was, was somewhat successful with business, I was still very uh, introverted and, and, you know, not mm -hmm. qu quite, quite shy generally. Mm -hmm. So then the experience with the band kind of helped me, you know, feel comfortable in my own skin and get up in front of people and really put and myself really, out yeah. there. And at the same time, there was this kind of proliferation of social media. So Instagram was uh, becoming more popular. It was kind of overtaking Facebook at the time. And so I... what year was this in? What? Ooh, yeah. uh, I'm going to say 20... Th yeah. Yes. Like so I'm going to say 2013. Okay. I'm going to say 2013, yeah. roughly. Okay. This is when it started. And at twenty and around about 2013, early 2014, okay. some photographers reached out to yeah. take my photo. And at the time, I thought that, I mean... But you, at the time, already doing posts around modeling or... No, no, or I wasn't music. doing any of that. Okay. It was just mostly music and um, just, you know, just what everyone was using. Lifestyle, okay. uh, lifestyle, yeah. Or not. Sorry, what everyone was using Instagram for at the time was just sharing their daily. Yeah, it posts. wasn't a thing back yeah. then. I don't no, know. I think yeah. my like, my yeah. first post was a picture of um, a box of sugar cubes. Oh, nice! <laughs> Probably using <laughs> the Instagram filters. Yeah, filter. yeah, ex exactly. Yeah, yeah. this was a, a long time <laughs> right ago. Back. Um, yeah, and I had some opportunities to uh, model with some really amazing photographers and I just thought this is so kind of crazy coming from where I'd come from um and it really triggered this innate visceral fear in me which I was like shit I oh I, I really don't feel comfortable with this mm -hmm. but something happened and I don't know exactly what it was but it it was I identified that kind of fear as an opportunity as a as a, as a yeah, as a drive, as an opportunity to really embrace something and step out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, fast forward a couple more shoots. I then got scouted by a modeling agency Wow. Um, in Germany and in London. I moved to London um, just because I needed a change. I kind of felt like I was, um, I'd lived in Cardiff all my okay. life at the time. So I grew up in Cardiff. And I, yeah, I just felt like I needed needed to change, to needed to, to continue to grow. Mm -hmm. So I moved to London, got signed to an agency in London. And the social media side started when I was trying to build up my portfolio for modeling. And you know, I, I didn't have a background in fashion. I you didn't know finance. anything about it. Yeah, yeah exactly. finance. So what I would do is contact PR companies to get clothes to wear really? to build my portfolio wow. and then as the industry was growing some of the PR companies said well actually could you wear this mm -hmm. and so they were then they could reach you back organically exactly exactly and they would then reach I think I had 15 20,000 followers at the time they'd reach them 
And then I thought, hang on a minute, there's something here. Yeah, yes. This is fun. I've I can, it. <laughs> yeah, I can wear a t-shirt instead of talking about dying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I really kind of embraced that. And it was this constant, um, I, I saw the business opportunity in it and I saw the opportunity to spend my time doing enjoyable things and meeting amazing creative people mm -hmm. through the process, which I wasn't getting in, in, in that other side so I took the bull by the horns and here I am yep wow although slightly different to how I yeah. started out just the, the when you like the the transformation element what actually has triggered you to actually say I need to change hmm. what was the the moment that you felt that and second question is did you have any help to support you that journey of the transformation? There was a number of triggering factors. It was mostly kind of rooted in a, a feeling. I don't, I don't want to say depression because I was yeah. never diagnosed with depression by a doctor, yeah. but I, I, I felt like my life couldn't continue in the way that it was going. And that was quite a, a, a like a, a poignant a, a real strong feeling that I can't continue this. So what other choice do I have? And it's as simple as that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. And strangely, I was in a very fortunate position, um, which might be looked as, as unfortunate in that I didn't have much of a social life at the time, which was one of the reasons for being so down. I didn't have much of a support system at all, which actually meant I was a blank canvas. So I was like, right, so okay, you... I can, I have nothing to lose here at all. I can try everything and try anything. And yeah, I have I've got zero, zero people zero. telling me, zero judgment, zero people telling me trying to I give me advice. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So it was a case of researching and reaching out to people and just trialing different things and really kind of looking at, it sounds kind of sterile but looking at my life and my my health as a, a like an experiment yeah. which I could just Love try that. things yeah yes. it's so fun I mean it's got you to the place you're in now I know it's worked so I know which is what you. Yeah. I think that's what has um inspired me and motivated me to take more chances yeah. now now and to continue seeking mm -hmm things that make me feel a little bit uncomfortable in that way and, and step yeah. out of my comfort zone. And I you know like what I'm like, what you said, like I was shy, I was an introvert. And now you had, I didn't have much social life. Mm -hmm. And now it's the opposite because you were, you were in creator content. You have, I, I'm guessing you have a social life, but you have Somehow. also a social media <laughs> life, yes. right? Yeah. Yeah. Because like now you said, oh, I didn't have much of support system. Mm -hmm. And now like, because like with the community that you have, mm -hmm. even if they are not closer to you, like on a today to day, they are a support system. So they are your, like, as you share content, as you share stories, you have that community that is actually engaging with you and driving you to continue to do what you do. So the paradox of like being an introvert in China, mm -hmm. having social and, and, a, and a system to support. And now you have all of that, I, I know in, in different ways and meanings, but it's beautiful, right? No, absolutely. And occasionally I get the odd message coming through, which really mm -hmm. kind of hits me kind of. Yeah right in the fields and and it's so motivating to yeah to continue yeah. doing what i'm doing especially because it's, it's such a, a fickle world of social media where one thing's on trend one day and then next thing the next day and it's, it's, a, it's a different thing yeah and the nature tell us a little bit about nature right because like we can see like when we scroll down your content and see like the way you are creating you know your stories and it's very much like linked to to, to nature. Mm -hmm. When does this all start? Because there's, yeah, there's a nature element, <laughs> and there's a sport element, and then of course it's the beautiful content, all very inspiring. But what's the when the nature starts being a part of so your that's, content? Yeah, that's interesting um, because I didn't grow up with an affinity to nature. Okay. I didn't grow up. Um, in love with the outdoors yeah. or, or wasn't exposed to it. Um, 
So how that came about was I was growing uh, increasingly less comfortable with just wearing clothes and putting across this image and selling something. Okay. Mm -hmm. being, um, is that like being a model full stop? You were getting it, bored or? It was more the fashion side of social media okay. yeah. um, because the undertone of a fashion influencer yeah. is essentially, hey guys, look at me. Don't I look good? Yeah. Buy this thing and then you'll be happy. And to an extent, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, for I some mean, people, for some influencers, I think that is the case. Well, sure. uh, and that might be what, it might not be what the actual influencer is trying to do, yeah. but that is certainly what some people take from it. Mm -hmm. And, and that's how I perceived what I was doing because because I didn't have a, a background in fashion, because I didn't have a, a an intrinsic um, interest in yeah. design. Uh, so I kind of felt increasingly uncomfortable with what, what am I doing? So to mitigate that, I would arrange shoots in a more editorial way or try and put the items or the, the clothing in context of something bigger and yes. paint a, uh, an emotional story, story around, around the clothes. And that resulted in a travel opportunity to Tanzania doing an active safari. And I integrated that nice. with one of my clients, Bell Staff, at the time. So I thought, okay, this is great. I can take the Bell Staff clothes, I can shoot them in the Serengeti. And, you know, it becomes and about more than more just this is a cool jacket. Clothes. It's kind of mm -hmm. putting it in the greater context. And on that trip, I had a really poignant moment with um, a herd of elephants where I was perched on top of uh, some rocks right over this elephant's watering hole. Wow. And we got there early because we knew they'd come out at, at dusk and we're all sweating, uh, kind of slipping down the rocks. There's baboon shit everywhere. It's like, <laughs> wow. it's proper, proper rough. But <laughs> out comes this herd of about 20 plus elephants from this forest into oh, this opening. Oh my God. And it was a full family system of grandparents, babies, everything. It was just magical. And I was filming it and out they come and about a quarter of the way in, they just stop. And one of the at the front raises its trunk. And then the next one raises its trunk and then they all do. And then they kind of stop for a moment and then they continue because on. And what I was told, I don't know if this is actually the case, but what I was told is that was them um, smelling us and then making a decision to continue to their watering hole. Mm -hmm. wow. And then they were like drinking literally uh, two, three meters below me, this massive herd of jostling, huge animals. And I, I think it was that, um, I didn't realize it at the time, but it was that moment where I really kind of experienced the cognition, the, the thought process that's going on inside that animal considering my presence i'm looking at it and it's making a, a decision beautiful how to uh to continue um yeah and that was really really poignant i was like i want more of this yeah and the sport kite uh, the sport side, side comes in uh in that i was only able to do that because i'd overcome my previous physical or not overcome i had improved my previous physical yeah. limitations you know, that which enabled me to go on a walking safari in the Serengeti, yeah. which you need to be relatively, relatively active yeah. for. So it kind of fed back into this loop of, right, okay, now I need to, I really want to continue my journey of improving my physical ability, my mental ability, because I want to experience more of this. And I really fed into this um, loop of personal improvement motivates me to experience the planet and then mm. and nature and then the planet and nature then motivates me to improve my physical ability and be better and improve my impact on nature and the planet and it really the two things are, are intrinsically linked yeah and is it the case that you felt the urge and the need to then show your followers that you had already and build upon this like adventure and the physical like journey that you've been on is it like now my content is going to be about this is that you know i don't think it was a conscious decision it was it's more so my i mean my motivation for for um really spending time on my social media in the first place is so i could yeah. spend time doing the things which i felt yeah like i wanted to do with my time not like a job 
So uh, there, there's a quote, um, I think it's Alan Watts, who said, it's crazy to do something you don't want to do in order to carry on doing something you don't want to do. So I was so like, true. no, I don't want to, like the, these types of posts, this type of work is making me feel uncomfortable. So I'm not going to continue doing yeah. that. I'm going to go in this direction and I'm going to gravitate towards the thing that makes me feel the best. That comes across. Sorry, like mm. it, it comes across in the content because you can tell this is what 100%. you want to share and your stories are authentic, incredible. And that's why ultimately brands want to work with you because you've got this amazing storyline that's continued throughout. It's not like one post is about this, the next it's a fashion brand. It's all integrated and I think it works so, so well. And it's why people love you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank, thank you because it's a, it's a struggle sometimes because yeah. you've got like the, the industry yeah. or what you feel like the industry is pulling you in one direction mm -hmm. and no, you need like to keep integrity strong. pulling yeah. me in the other yes. direction. But one thing that you like, I love to like to pick the words you're, you mentioned and one word that you said, like the emotional connection, right? Mm -hmm. Like as, as an agency, you know, we do, you know, so much uh, work with the brands um, we have as a client and we work with so many, you know, uh, talents and influence across the globe. But as you're talking about Instagram, when you started 2013, I started the agency 2014 as mm -hmm. well. When like Instagram was just like, yeah. a, you know, a photo sharing social uh, social media that was just the filters that mm -hmm. we're just playing with the filters it's fun. and then as we're speaking <laughs> up so we're, we're just more about like you know mm -hmm. influencers or talents or normal people sharing about their lifestyle mm -hmm. so forth became you know more edit more premium more mm -hmm. you know product produce it and now what you're looking into the evolution of influencer marketing is just consumers or even all of us, we are much more, you know, savvy when it comes to consume content, right? Because mm -hmm. now there's so much content out there, not just from influencers, but from yeah. brands, from publications. And sometimes it's overwhelmed, right? Because mm -hmm. especially it depends on how many followers you, how many people you follow. So it's different type of content coming on your feed all the time. So how to digest that, which one to engage, which one to connect. And we've been seeing that content that has a real story and has that emotional connection with the audience are the ones that are engaging the most because we all are seeking for stories, mm -hmm. but real stories. Yeah. And we want it to be touched by emotion, right? So because if I am at, if I see a content of yours that is actually touching to my emotion is how I'm going to engage because that's the type of content that we all are looking into. And I feel like based on your story and all you're saying that you identify that in a very early stage, that it was not just about what the brands wants me to do is more about how I'm going to yeah. create a story around the contents that I'm sharing, that I'm going to be passionate about it and that it's going to continue to give me the excitement to continue to do, but also engaging my audience in a way that they will be excited to see what I'm doing. So what is your process of creating it is it, the process of creating a story on your content is something you said that it's very organically mm -hmm. or do you use your audience to hear what they're saying to actually create a story? Um, the former. So I I'm not the type of person who will ask my audience what what they would like me to create uh, primarily because you know I created this channel for myself in yeah. order to expand my yeah. my experience of life and I find there's a growing um, population and a growing case of people creating to share mm -hmm. and that's our first motivation is to create the content in to, order yeah. to share it which I believe you should create for yourself, for yourself. and share it. So it's a, a very um, yeah. kind of particular difference. And it comes down to if, if I have a, a brand brief or something, I'll look for ways to integrate that into my life and into mm -hmm. 
either the trips that I have coming up or maybe I'll even design or build something mm -hmm. around it in a way which I feel ties in with that message. But really it comes down to creating genuine, authentic content, which is, it doesn't only appear to be like emotionally pertinent, it is, and then you share it. I think, again, we worked with you on the Barber campaign with House of Fraser and it, our it strategy that the team came up with fit in perfectly with what your content is already sh yeah. showing and sharing. 100%. So I think we were so happy to have you on board with that. And like, I think we worked together to kind of figure out the way that it was gonna go. And the whole thing was to venture out, which is obviously all you do. <laughs> yeah, and that, and that can mean many things. Yeah. And that's what I tried to get across uh, yeah. in a very short video is like to venture oh, out yeah, can be, course. you know, literally to step outside your front door or to step out of your comfort zone or, or to do something that you didn't think was possible. Yeah. Talk about video, because now mm -hmm. you started with photos and now we have videos mm. and then <laughs> yeah. your videos are incredibly engaged and it's uh, inspiring and high quality. Tell us about like photo and video, what's inspiring you to actually, you know, okay, why a video, why a photo mm. and how do you see the difference? between then when it comes to share your own personal experience with your content? I, I was quite late to adopt the video um, sharing For side some of reason. Instagram. Interesting, yeah. Well, because I, I had learned photography and what I enjoyed okay. was photography and I would self shoot my campaigns, which is quite, it's not easy, but it's, self-shooting photos. I don't even imagine like, how to self-shoot a campaign, guys. <laughs> yeah, so he did it, okay. Yeah, well, self-shooting um, photos is a hell of a lot easier than self-shooting videos. Okay. Um, so I had kind of gravitated towards that and I developed during this uh, time a real uh, passion for wildlife photography. Yeah. It's what I really enjoy Which doing. Which is beautiful. Yeah, it's stunning. Thank you. <laughs> um, and then, uh, unfortunately, uh, and this is the interesting thing, uh, Instagram changed the way they worked mm -hmm. and you just the reach of photos down. changed. And this was a real, I, I found it quite interesting um, and a real nice reminder that we're working on someone else's platform. You know, it's, it's not, not yours. Yeah, so it's you... not mine. I, I have no right to say, well, you should show all my followers this or whatever, because it's not my platform. Yeah. I'm sharing mm -hmm. it on, on theirs. And yeah, I then, had to learn to make videos and make uh, contacts with really talented videographers and work with them in a way which uh, both was feasible with time scales and feasible with budgets as well, yeah. because video not only does it take longer and it's more it's difficult, more it's difficult. a damn sight more, more expensive, expensive to make as well. Um, but now I'm kind of, I'm enjoying the video side of things more because yeah. I can, I have more of a voice. I can I can put more of a narrative in that video. Yeah, it's more video. difficult. It's more storytelling. It's, yes, yeah, exactly. exactly. But oh, I remember the days where I could go out on a trip and come back with 30 photos and I'd have my whole content planned for a month yeah, afterwards. So now you have to oh, go to trip, you days. have to talk. Yeah, <laughs> you have to yeah, yeah. It. yeah. And that's why I post a lot less than I did, but I, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. And it was another challenge for you to talk, right? Because as you said, like there's a photo and now there's suddenly comes yeah. the video. And it's then- more personality coming it's, across. Exactly, more of a personality coming across. Do you use a lot of stories as well? Like, to, like you do, but like, how do you feel comfortable about talking with the stories or- This is why I gravitate towards content, which I enjoy in sectors that I, I think are valuable. I feel- I don't feel self-conscious talking about something that matters. Okay. You know, I feel empowered and I feel um, like I should talk about it. I It's like I've gone down to two extremes. I feel even more self-conscious talking about something that had is just I'm paid to do or something. Yeah. Yeah. And then even I find it even easier to talk mm -hmm. about something that has a purpose. So that's why I, can, I guess my work is gravitating yeah. towards more. And why the, your brand collaborations need to be integrated into mm -hmm. something that you love and want to tell and speak about, yeah. like getting outside or if it's your collaborations with nature. Well, we have a, I think we have a responsibility as, as creators creator, and 100%. as yes. people with an audience, 100%, 100%. however we do it, we have a responsibility to however it is, attempt to improve people's life experience 
in some way, mm-hmm. however. 100%. That yeah. It's not going to work otherwise if you want to no. be that person on Instagram with an engaged audience. Like, no. And it might, work for, it might work really well for a very short period of time and you might be incredibly successful, but God, life is going to slap you in the face yeah, very quickly at some will, point in 100%. the future. Um, and it, like it's, uh, the purpose, the matter, the impact. Mm-hmm. You mentioned three words I'm, I'm going to, to South by Southwest uh, yes. on Saturday. I'm and um, my talk is all around, you know, storytelling with purpose, impact and matter. Mm-hmm. Uh, because again, I think we're looking for content that has an impact on when I'm looking into the content, but also to, you know, consume content that matters, right? That you're putting something out there that is a purpose. And it's incredible to see that you're already sinking through it because it's not every influencer or creative content that understand the impact that they have when well, they every, share content. Every bit of content every, has an impact. Exactly. But it's not every talent or creator that has that you know, sense of responsibility, mm-hmm. right? Because the impact can be mm-hmm. a positive impact, can be a negative impact. We all know like what social media can cause yeah. on, you know, and especially on the young generation. So it's a, it's, it's great that you, you said that for you, purpose matters and the conscious that you have about the impact that your content can, can create for those that are following you. Uh, yeah, it has to. And I've, I've been very fortunate in that I've been successful in a number of different sectors. Yeah. And that's actually resulted in a feeling of searching for something that actually makes me feel and actually makes me feel good. And and what you realize over time is that success for the sake of success Success. isn't the answer. It doesn't, it's not fulfilling. And you almost kind of, I wish people didn't have to, but you've got to go through that process of having it and then realizing that, oh, that's not all it's cracked up to be. Nobody really cares. And, and then, do you talk about like you know like because your story is so fascinating so like well done for you know for for going through this transformation but again not just transformation for the world size but I, I can feel it that it's something that is just beyond the way you look it's just you know is is a combination. Mm-hmm. Do you talk about that on your social or is something that you don't talk about it because like this is me saying yeah. right that you can inspire a lot of people, like not just saying that you shouldn't do the nature, the amazing yeah. content that you're doing, but to share that knowledge of how you overcome that and where you are today. And I don't know, do you do yeah. that? Do you talk about it? Not enough. No, okay. I don't. Um, and I should. Um, you should. I haven't found a way to frame it in a way which I'm comfortable with yeah. in such a, 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 a short form platform. Um, because it's a very long and complicated story. That makes sense. Uh, it yeah. We can create a podcast for you if you want. We have a beautiful <laughs> studio. We have <laughs> editors and videographers. Yeah. I would, yeah. Copywriters. <laughs> I would love that. I mean, one of, one of the things that I haven't said is that the, the continued um, conversations I've had with amazing people throughout this process is, is what has... Mm-hmm constantly given me more perspective and it's allowed this transformation process to continue and evolve through um through the years and i was um so this time last year i went out to florida to train with a guy called ben patrick whose username knees over toes guy okay Uh, he's incredible and he had a similar transformation story but his was more athletic ability rather than appearance and we did we recorded a podcast we recorded some um, content and a reel on how to start a a transformation and getting his aspect on it because his story is incredible as well okay i wanted to check it out okay yeah no it's just yeah because i said like the, the content that you do today i think is just like yes just don't stop doing that yeah but listening to like when i listen to what you do today and how that led you to this point i think there will be another source mm-hmm. of uh inspiration and yeah. impact that you as a creator can and can can cause in and so in so many people I would like that Definitely. what i try to do or what well not that i try to do i don't delete any content like okay, I might have good. archived a couple just because I, I posted it wrong or something. But if you scroll through my profile, it's a long old way, but you can actually see everything because I don't want to look like I've always been this person because that yeah, alienates yeah. people who aren't. Exactly, at that point exactly, in time. exactly. So I keep 
everything that I've pretty much ever posted. And you can see that transition That's through so that. That's so nice. Yeah, and which is super important. It would be, yeah, it would be nice to find a way to package that in a way which people can see because, you know, not everyone's going to want to spend half an hour waiting for Instagram to load 3,000 yes, times. <laughs> and, and like, where do you see, like, because we mentioned at the beginning of, you know, of our conversation that social media and industry of influencer marketing, the digital, and now we're talking about, you know, like South by Southwest again, mm -hmm. we're going to be all around Web 3.0 and AI for sure. And then we have the chat GPT. So just everything evolves and changes so quickly. Do you follow how things are changing and do you worry about it that you need to keep, keep transforming up. or keep up or you just know like this is who i am i'm gonna stick with instagram i'm not gonna adapt or are you open to just because it changed and mm -hmm. changed really quickly and does create an impact on 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 on, on creators like it's uh, it's, in, it's, it's undoubtedly to say oh they just change and it's not impacting creators because it is impacting so what is your vision on that? It's a difficult, difficult question. Um, everything changes at such an incredible pace. 100%. You need to, I need to hold the vision of what I'm doing and not allow myself to be distracted. But that being said, I need to be open and aware of the changes which are happening and look for opportunities within those that feel right. Because you can't change, you can't adapt to every trend because no. otherwise you lose your voice and you just become yeah. a, a, a cog in the system. A robot almost. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So it's, you know, I, I'm, I'm very interested in business. I'm, I'm interested in tech and how things work. I find the whole AI um, uh, proliferation fascinating how quickly that's It's been very as well. it's quick, quick, quick. <laughs> what I kind of, I see in a strange way is just um, kind of polarizing aspects where uh, people are there's a lot of tech platforms that uh, sell their products and their systems they create problems for them to answer the problem <laughs> and you have because we have such a large industry because the industry it's has grown tenfold you have a lot of companies and a lot of people coming in and creating things and then cr and issues and then creating solutions whether they'll be long lasting or not is who it's knows. A, um, and you have a lot of people shifting the, the playing field and then a lot of creators and a lot of influencers will try and move along with that. And all you can do, all I can do is continue doing what I'm doing and see any opportunities and try and integrate the them in, that you in can integrate it in. So you're not yeah. skeptical or like, you are like you you're you're open to understand what's happening as i as yeah. you said and then like okay how how this can contribute or not to yeah and it is it is a it, you know it, it stresses me out sometimes when everything's yeah. happening and i i i would like to be kind of more indifferent but you know you've, you've got to keep up with these things you've got to be aware of them yeah um, it's important, but that necessarily means that you have to yeah. adapt no. to everything. I think it's, yeah, like you said, it's nice to be aware and keep up with the trends and re do your research, but being true to who you are and what you want yeah. to be as a content creator, and it, like is how you're going to keep your audience and yeah. how you, you can't deviate from what you truly believe that no, you should that's be doing. It. But you can change your mind. Yeah. For sure. And, and I don't have a TikTok account. Yeah. Um, oh, you don't. I you don't. don't. Do that. I, don't do, I, don't I, do do I did the research um, and you don't. <laughs> and I thought it was like. I'm, I might in and the future. And, and, and I, I thought it was like, wow, like he doesn't have a TikTok account. Not in the sense like, wow, oh my God. It was just like very brave, right? Yeah. Like, which is, is amazing because like a lot of creators, they jump in because like they felt that it's a must, it's a need. And this is when the whole thing becomes this job. I might as well just yeah. go and work in an yeah. office and do a job that I don't want to do if I'm going to yeah. do that. Because okay. you know? I'm very True. good at that. And yeah, I can 100%. do that and then yeah. come home with and only work nine yeah. hours a day instead of working 16 hours a day. It depends on what you want from yeah. yeah. It, it like, yeah. Tick, I mean, obviously, we love TikTok. It's a great platform, but there's 
it, no, it needs to make you, sense. It needs I, to make I sense need to, you. I need to have a way to create content which I feel works on that platform. And at the moment, I don't have that or I don't have the mental yeah. capacity to, to come up with that. And that's equal. And I'm okay, okay with that. Yes. Yeah. And I know we need to finish soon, but tell me, how do we engage with your audience? Do you respond all our DMs? Do you respond to their comments? Yeah, how do I you do. keep your audience engaged? Because engagement today is the metric that every brand is looking for, right? And then... Well, this is, that's a whole other conversation. And it's another yeah, conversation because yeah, I think yeah, brand, yeah. I, like, I, I know I talk about the brand, but forget about it's the brand, talk about the community. Yeah. Yes, they talk about the community because you do have a higher engagement mm -hmm. rate, right? And... This is shows that your content is engaging with your audience. Yeah. So how do you keep that engagement through conversations, responding mm -hmm. DMs or comments? How do you keep closer to your community? All, all of the above. I try, I try okay. and respond to every, um, every comment. If you look back, there are some quite uh, difficult questions that people pose and I'll always try and answer them to the best okay. of my ability. Maybe not immediately, but always. DMs, if they're relevant, I'll reply to them. Yes. If they have you know, a, a genuine question, I'll respond. Um, I think that's important because you know, if I'm presenting just a 30 second or a 10 second video or a yeah. photo, you know, that, that's, that's, somebody might not be sure what I'm trying to get across, mm -hmm. which is 100%. absolutely fine. I would, I would like people to ask more questions rather than assume Mm -hmm. something amazing personally but yeah I, but yeah. do you do you get to see your audience in person do you get, get together or no it's just more around no um i not as a kind of like as a mass yes. gathering but i have met many and okay, i've met many good. of my that's peers good. and a lot of my following is people i really respect and who influence me wow that's great and i get like uh like i mentioned ben earlier that was yeah. a really special week training with him um and yeah i think it's interacting with it's it's super important and it yeah. looks like you do have a very loyal community and uh, and again it's not every creator that has a loyal community with that level of engagement forget about what the brands want but it's a, it's it's impressive yeah. and you you got to think of engagement as more than a metric like i i say this to 100%. brands and i say this to people i talk to i'd rather really impact a handful of people's lives than tap three million people on the shoulder you know i could not agree more with but you, you look at today. just the three million versus three yeah there's no competition but 100%. you know all right so i know we needed to wrap up <laughs> We can uh, keep going for hours. We can I think. keep going for yeah. hours. I think we need to do episode two, please. <laughs> um, if you can give a tip of advice, doesn't need to be for a creator or for a brand. Can be anything. What that Life. would be? I think for brands and creators, it would be to find your why, to look for Love your why, it. and act on that. Amazing. Wow, your story, again, it's very inspirational. I know the team has been working with you and they've been talking a lot about you and they're like, you need to have him on our podcast. Yeah. So <laughs> We've been pushing I'm for it. very grateful that you guys did. Uh, Thank you for having me. And really again, like, think about it. Talk more about your story without not stop doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But I think you can, the impact that you're already giving to people mm -hmm. you can scale too well we can talk about this after. we can talk about this after i already have some ideas <laughs> <laughs> i'm all ears i'm all ears all right thank you so much everyone uh for having joined another episode of our influencer marketing Gover podcast i really hope you guys have enjoyed this conversation as much as i did uh inspirational story great tips and you know like who doesn't want us to hear about like overcome yourself surpassing yourself master yourself and i think you know we had a great example here today thank you for tuning in and if you're not following us yet please do so on apple spotify and amazon and of course youtube and thank you so much for being here with us once again and i'm looking forward to see you all on our next episode thank you so much Holly, I hope <laughs> Thank you have you. enjoyed. I've had so much fun. You wanted to come back? <laughs> yeah, I need an episode two. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. And again, Thank like you. so grateful. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you again, team, for another incredible episode. And it's a wrap for today. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.